Every time you get some money, I make him write some money. Hey everyone, this is Ben from T3 bringing you a, the winner's finals from the regional championship that took place on May 7th in Las Vegas, Nevada. On the left we have Brian playing Wizard, and on the right we have John playing IG, or Industrial Genomics, and special guest commentator with me, I have Timmy Wong. Hey, thanks for having me back, Ben. It's been a while. It, it certainly has, but we're going to get this one kicked off at the height of the IG nonsense here. Um, it was just released today, I guess. There's some changes that will come to this, but we'll leave that for another discussion. IG has been, I think John, there's only a couple IGs at this tournament, though, and both of them placed exceptionally well. Well, it's never a very popular deck because uh, it plays so differently from every other corp deck. Uh, the games take so long. Uh, people hate it because of how like grindy and kind of non-reactive it is. Um, it's yeah, its goal is to like lock out the runner from doing anything, and runners tend not to like that. Uh, who is the other IG player in this tournament? Do you remember? I I don't. I think there was there's just the two, and this is a long time ago. It was just the two, and both of them got in top eight, I believe, uh, unless I'm I'm mistaken, but. Uh, either way, John's been piloting this beast for a while, and we actually got a sneak preview uh, just before the tournament. So, like a week before this, uh, we we had a little barbecue event at a friend's house, and uh, that's when John debuted this IG deck that he'd been working on, and uh, it was crazy. I lost to it three times in succession, and it felt bad. And I don't think any of those games took less than an hour to play. Uh, they each <laughs> took like about an hour. Uh, okay, but, no, but actually that was, that was a while ago. That was before the San Francisco Regional, which happened before this one. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. But, uh, that was when I built my, like, uh, anti-IG wizard deck, and I played that in San Francisco, and then I refined it and played it here. So this is, uh, a couple weeks later, it's, this deck is pretty well known at this point, um, and it's part of the reason why wizard is so popular on the runner side. Uh, and you can see that Brian is piloting it here, uh, partly because it's also just the general best deck right now. It is a very, very strong deck. The, uh, the tools, Dumblefork has, Wildside, Pancakes, Faust, David, just so many good cards coming out of the NR card pool. And the, the Wizard recurring credits is basically just saying start with 20 credits this game. Uh, it is ultimately what Wizard does in this matchup. So, uh, pretty ideal uh, for Brian going into this, at least as far as getting value for his Wizard bucks, except we all know he's going to need way more money than, uh, than those 20 credits to, to keep IG down here. Yeah, uh, this is a pretty tricky matchup, actually. Wizard is more equipped than any other runner to deal with this amount of asset spam, but uh, IG's ID ability still makes things difficult for him if IG can set up uh, loaded archives. And uh, the early game is really, really important here. Uh, if Wizard can like stay on top of the assets, uh, keep the board under control, then he has a really good shot of like winning the extended game. But it takes a lot of like discipline to to manage that. Uh, a lot of like counterintuitive plays, like just not going for accesses and spending all your efforts on trashing every card. I agree. There's definitely some uh, key lin uh, like linchstone pieces in, in this IG deck, and you need to know when to attack it and what you have to prioritize over the other. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a lot of experience playing this matchup, you're, in, you're not really going to have a great time, I think has, has been my observation of it so far. Yeah. They snowball really quickly if you let IG get any foothold. Or if you misprioritize, it can mm -hmm. it goes quick. All right, and we're off. Uh, John opens with draw, draw, and ice R and D. Slightly different from the usual opening against Wizard, where you uh, draw, draw, ice archives and discard two cards, so you get your trash costs up before they can do anything about it. Uh, John here decides to guard his R and D against uh, perhaps an early medium attack. So as Ryan, Ryan wants to be setting up his like long-term econ options, but I don't know. He just goes draw, draw opening, and then runs HQ. And I, I think here uh, John did this on purpose. He wanted to try and bait some of Brian's time. Although hitting that Jackson is going to be big. That's probably the one card that John wanted to keep. 
Jackson is really nice early for IG uh, because it lets them overdraw safely and discard a lot of face down cards. It's, uh, perhaps more important to this archetype than almost any other one, barring like Cerebral Imaging. Did he let him keep the Jackson? Uh, looks like it. Wow. I don't know what's going on there. There, there was the free wizard credits there too. That's a free Jackson trash. Yeah. Can't say I agree with that. No, especially not against IG. You can't let him get that card draw that quick and just accelerate it so fat that fast. But uh, John, John seizing that opportunity, icing up archives to secure. Oh no, because he didn't. He wanted the extra money, right? Because uh, it's IG. But still, for two credits, trash Jackson, in my opinion. Oh yes, yes. And uh, John protecting his archives a little bit there, just to uh, you know keep that economic advantage he has. Yeah, that was probably a good reason not to run HQ. At least if you're going to run HQ, run archives first to get the trash costs down. Uh, while their trash costs are like at plus two or higher, it's really annoying to run anywhere because all their cards are trashable, and you want to trash them all. Uh, and you're just like hemorrhaging money if you do that for too long. But uh, Brian probably assumed that John had at least one shock, which is why he discarded and didn't guard archives. Which is a safe assumption, but at the same time, I don't know if career fairing your chronotype, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, Without wild probably side, too slow. Yeah, I think the uh, the priority here was was as you said, run archives at least clear the. Uh, yeah. I G. One net damage is. You're just gonna have to eat it, like. Mm -hmm. Uh, setting up the chronotype is, it helps you way later down the line once you find found wild side. But uh, right now the early game is what really matters. If, you, if you're too slow, then later it'll be just way too much of a pain to trash anything. Okay, so, uh, so Brian decided to run one of the face downs and found a hostile infrastructure, which he can't really afford to trash, uh, and a museum of history has been rezzed. Shuffling some face down back in. Dun dun dun. Yep, and John starts to get his uh, his engine going, get things shuffled back in for museum. And as as it's come up before, museum is one of the ones I would say is, is fairly important. Um, although I might say the hostile infrastructure, and with this turn just installing three new assets, uh, really just throws you for a loop. Yeah, I feel like you have to check this. Um, you, you're looking for a Mubad City Hall, or a tech startup. Yeah. I mean, because the, the economy battle right now is where it's stopping John from resing things. So, yeah, and, and here you need to attack, especially since it's only one additional cost to trash stuff with uh, the IG mm -hmm. ability. Trash Not the worst. Tech startup is huge here. If he can get a uh, Moombad City Hall or a Moomba Temple here, I think that's going to be a really, really important thing to trash. I mean, like, when you see IG just install, install, install... To me, that's a signal that at least one of those cards I need to trash. <laughs> well, almost all their cards are like must trashes at some level. So depending on the board definitely. state, but I think you can if you keep them if you're aggressive and you have the economy to kind of keep them down a little bit. I think um, I think early game is when you can make the most impact. And I mean Brian here, I'm not sure I agree with this. David, he seems to be kind of playing. A little bit more standard, uh, you know. If it was a different deck, I would suggest the David think that David was is good. Maybe he doesn't have a lot of economy, but I saw some parasites in there in his hand too. So a little bit That's more how important. A little bit more ice hate uh, on on Brian's side, but again, it's really hard when you have a deck that's about ice destruction. And then you play this deck when they run like six, seven pieces of ice. Well, those pieces of ice are really important. Uh, like without the ice on archives, wizard can just run archives at any time and trash things willy-nilly. Uh, but the, th yeah, so IG usually only plays like six or so pieces of ice, but they're all really high impact. Uh, I think the only one that's davidable would be Crick on Archives, which does seem fairly likely in this situation, but also there isn't that much in Archives for it to recur yet. Like, you can probably walk through it for now. No, I, I think try, I think face checking the ice on R and D, and I'm assuming it's a hive. It's a hive or a coma unit, right? Most likely, those are the two things you're looking at. And I, I just think there's a point where you need to just risk it. I mean, um, you know, you're in finals. I mean, it, it sucks because if you hit a coma inu, then your parasites are gone. <laughs> but if you, if it's a hive, then that's the parasite's just going to take down the hive in a couple of turns, which is pretty big. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's rough. Those parasites are hard to deploy because you want to really kill Kominu, but the Kominu will hit them out of your hand. Mm-hmm. Runs HQ, sees a hive. Has to read the hive. Okay. Well, that's scary. Maybe that uh, that is Kominu over R&D. Brian making the Seems right call likely. and not running uh, on that R&D. Well, John only has four credits, but he, if he has a face down Mumba Temple, then that'll give him the five credits he needs to res one of those five res cost ice. And yeah, Kominu would be pretty scary here. But it is kind of kind of spoiled. We know what that face down is because John accidentally misresed it. Oh really? Yeah, uh, he. It's a uh, bioethics. Oh. It's or yeah, bioethics or genetics pavilion. I didn't get a good look, but it was a red asset. One of those two. So, if Brian was paying attention, you might have known that, uh, which means either way, the ice over R&D would have been safe, and uh, getting those free accesses is always good, especially when you can dig a little bit deeper with Wizard. Yeah. So Brian looks like is mostly foregoing the board battle for now. He's, he's trying to take opportunistic trashes, but mostly he's trying to just like get lucky accesses. Uh, hopefully build up enough to compete with IG a little bit, but that seems kind of questionable because these assets are just going to keep coming. And he doesn't have an economy solution. Uh, it looks like a lot of programs and a couple of operations like I've had worse are sitting. Yeah, in, it looks uh, like he's found zero money cards, which really sucks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, can't help but think that's having a significant impact on his ability to fight John's board state. Clicking for credits doesn't work in every deck, Timmy. <laughs> you need a strategy that kind of supports it. Yeah. OK, so oh. it was a Koma Inu, but it was a Moomba Temple that John had to just put down. So. Yep, so exactly what I mentioned earlier with Moomba Temple plus four credits resing that Koma Inu. Trashing everything, and Brian Jack's out in fear of shock. Which is reasonable at this point. You don't want to, that'd mm -hmm. be bad. Or fetal AI. Or fetal. Yeah. But there's only, what, two in this deck? One one or two? Yeah, but like, what can you even really hit that's good? Like, Food? <laughs> yeah, but like, it's less likely than you dying, probably. True. So, not a great gamble. John trying to figure out what he's, what he's doing here. I mean, it's not, it's not looking great for Brian. Uh, he... A David and an adjusted chronotype are the only thing on his board. His hand just got wiped by the Koma Inu, and there's a lot of stuff on the board for him to, to deal with. John doesn't really have any money, but that Moomba Temple helps mitigate it to, to some degree. Yeah, with Moomba Temples, you almost don't need money anymore mm -hmm. <laughs> once you get enough of this. Because uh, it's not like this IG deck. If you don't know, this IG deck is not trying to score. It doesn't care about that at all. It's just going to go for a long game and try and choke you out uh, through attrition. So the, the Moomba Temples are a more reliable means of economy for it. Since it's not trying to advance and score, it's pretty much the only thing the Moomba Temples can do. The one saving grace of in this game is that uh, John hasn't found the best card in his deck, which is Mumbat City Hall. Uh, if he had that, he would have uh, two more museums and two more Moomba Temples running. And the snowball would be much, much faster. Mm -hmm. But uh, Brian did manage to trash the one tech startup. So that almost certainly would have searched up this but, card right here. Yep. OK. Oh, but here we go. And uh, already two museums on the board. Uh, we know there's a hosp hostile infrastructure down there. That Moomba Temple, if John goes to get another museum of hist or another Moomba Temple, then the uh, hostile infrastructure play can come online. And that's going to cause Brian a, a world of trouble. And I have to imagine it's about to come up. Yeah, yeah so. I think so. I mean, I, I don't know. I always hate the, the hustle infrastructure. It's the scariest card in, in that deck to me. Yeah, it kind of is. It gets to the point where you can't even, tr you can't trash it, and you can't take the net damage from trashing everything else, and then everything else just passive net damage. And, ugh. It's a really strong card if the Corp gets to res it for free, which is what Mama Temple allows. It's pretty gross. Yep. 
Oh, what was that a tutor for? I don't even know what John's tutoring for. It's either a temple or museum. Yeah. All right, there's another temple, at least. Yeah. So he can res the, the hostile infrastructure, which is the important thing. Regardless of whether that second, the first card John tutored was. Huh. Yeah. And yeah, oh. this is, this is just like the end, basically. <laughs> like the game will drag on, unfortunately. It'll be really grindy. But uh, Brian is just not in a spot to compete with this. Yeah, the daily casts aren't really going to do much. I mean, John doesn't have anything protecting archives, really. The ice, obviously, but there's no Caprice there, which is a small saving grace. But it, again, it's just another hurdle that this IG deck throws in, it throws in your way. I mean, you need to hit archives first, then you need to hit the Ocelot infrastructure, then you need to hit all these other things. And that and if you don't hit the Jackson, John can just shuffle the Jackson, you know, Jackson things back into the deck and mm -hmm. one thing after another and uh and Brian really doesn't have the, the time or money to to deal with any of that. If he finds a liberated accounts and uses it, okay, here he goes, that's good. Uh so now after a turn of that, he'll have like 18 credits or so. Then he can spend a turn running archives, uh, probably like letting David in through the crick, taking some shock damage, and then he can trash like the three most impactful things on the board, which would be like hostile and maybe both museums if there are only two museums on the table. Uh, and then John would search up a third museum and probably like ice it with Hive. And then Brian could like trash the temples to stop John from resing the Hive, maybe, and then go kill the last temple, uh, last museum. And that would kind of get the board back into a manageable spot. <laughs> but it would cost him like all of his liberated money. Two full turns and all of his... Yeah, and he would take a bunch of damage. Yeah. But that might be his, his best hope, honestly. Yep, there's Bioethics. Pew, pew. One damage every turn, so the clock begins. Yep, and John's... Yeah, because with all the stuff in archives, John can't even, or Brian can't even trash any John's stuff. He doesn't have the money. Even with the wizard credits, I don't think he has the money. Yeah, he really has to get into archives first, or he can only trash like one thing. Or employee strike. Definitely. Employee yeah. strike if he's playing really employee good. strike, that would be quite strong. This would be such a great turn to drop it too. This would be an excellent turn to see an employee strike. I think most wizard lists ran one around this time. Be pretty good. Primarily for this matchup. Would be pretty good, guys. Uh, and John shuffled two face downs in again. Yeah, the ability to just like cycle his agendas back into R and D whenever he wants is really powerful. Uh, because archives is so spiky that. He can do it in pretty much complete safety with a Jackson on board. Right, Brian needs to draw some cards, but he's getting pinged by this bioethics, which is... But yeah, but Brian really needs to, to make a move. I, and I don't know if this central pressure that Data Sucker is going to offer is really going to help here. Uh, I mean... Data Sucker is kind of nice for killing Parasite Ice faster. Uh, but there's no... I think the fast just like doesn't do anything there. No. Except for breaking Crick, maybe. It's it's probably not worth it to even install. Wild Side will be nice. Yes, that's a good pick. I wonder how much experience Brian has with this IG matchup. Um, I bet they've played together a little bit. They're both from the Northern California area. Not Northern California, uh, Ventura County area. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I think they play together fairly regularly. And Brian probably has a little experience, but no one really wants to practice against this deck because the games take so long. <laughs> and they're not fun games. Well, I'm sure a few people find them fun. <laughs> 
fun. No, you yeah. not the general don't find the, If you find this fun, no, just no. Yeah. Talking to you, John, too. He's been playing it for a long time. He must find it fun at some level. When it becomes a chant, that it won't it won't get banned if people don't play it. <laughs> and I've heard both John and Jerry, another local player uh, in our area, say that many a times in regionals, bringing IG to the tournament. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's not the player's job to decide what should or should not be played. Brian trying to figure out what his plan of attack could be at this point in the game. Um, and it's a really good question. I mean, I, I think, Timmy, you had the best answer um, a couple of turns ago. Go trash as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. trash as much as you can. Uh, the, the alternative is to go for accesses by, like, finding a Parasite, Parasiting Kamuinu, playing Medium, and running that a bunch. But it's... But, I mean, it's, it's just not even that good a shot. Oh, he finds an agenda in HQ. Getting the food, a little surprising. Yeah. I guess uh, John put the ice on HQ thinking that it would deter the run there. And it, well, I think it does, too. At two cards for uh, for Faust to break, plus the net damage from the bioethics, uh, if John reses another bioethics here soon... There we go. There, oh, two man. more. Yeah. I think, um, right. I think this is going to be... is going to really make... <laughs> the end of this game happened quick. And he gets to search up another hostel, maybe? Uh, that's what I would say, yep. yep. So, two Dress. net damage to trash anything. You take three net damage at the start of your turn. Uh, unless Brian finds a lot of agendas really, really quick. Shuffling the tech startup back in. Good times. Yeah. This is going to be rough. Yeah, this could be a fast finish here, but I mean, there are a bunch of tricks Mike can, sorry, uh, Brian? Brian can pull to stay alive for a while, but um, none of them really get him closer uh, to winning. Right, I mean, like, yeah, you can survive, but it's going to take most of your turn just to tread water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and eventually you, you run out of energy doing that. But I mean, the, the lock is in place. I, I feel John is very, very much secured. He has everything he wants except for Gen X Pavilion, I think. Right, and as long as Brian doesn't get some very fortunate accesses, uh, I don't think that this is gonna be long. Because I mean, if John had a bunch of agendas, he could have been Mumba City Halling for the Heritage Committee to get the agendas back on top of his deck. Because he has the Jackson, so he can do it safely. So I really don't think it's like, I don't think John's flooded by any means. I think that's the only global food that he had. As long as he has Mumba, Temp or Mumba City Hall and Heritage Committee, the, the deck basically never floods out. Yeah. Because it plays like seven agendas and it can, every time it draws an agenda, it can shuffle it back into R&D. Once per turn. And I think uh, <laughs> they're, they're talking about a... They should have done that one at a time because they're separate hostile infrastructure triggers. Yes. Uh, so if he hits I've had worse first, he doesn't. Okay. okay. But if he hit I've had worse first, then uh, Brian would draw three before the next stage. But quickly and easily sorted out by these two guys. Brian does have an imp, which is slightly unusual, but pretty nice in this matchup for circumventing the IG additional trash cost. Only once per turn, though, so once per turn, still not really twice. enough. Twice, yeah. I mean, I think the a heritage committee, or not a heritage, an employee strike would be more effective than an imp in this matchup, but maybe only this matchup. Yeah, imp is just a generally good card. Like, there's no corp deck that doesn't do anything against. Yeah, you can't be immune to imp. Though it is hard to be immune to employee strike. You have to be playing something pretty weird. I'm, yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised with that card. How employee strike is played out in the meta. All right. Operation Treadwater continues. 
Extreme hand shuffling. Well, yeah. Just all these two. cards that he has no time to play. Mimic would be really nice if he could get the money to utilize it. Otherwise, every Koma Inu is just terrible for Brian. Parasite. Parasite's a good solution, but not a fast solution and not a safe one. Yeah. I think I'll just get shuffled back is the problem. Oh, that's true, too. Okay. Oh, and here's the Parasite hostile infrastructure interaction. Parasite does count as the runner trashing a corp card. So it actually becomes a liability in the late game. All right, two net damage. <laughs> and then the wild side. Okay, so the wild side's really helping. John really does need the genetics pavilion to, to lock, to tidy this up, put a bow tie on it. But in the meantime, Brian still's got some some time here to go in, try and get some accesses, stay alive, find some stuff. Well, John just advanced what presumably is a Ronin, so. It's dicey. He needs to, so Brian needs to drop to five, and then the bioethics ping him down to three, and then the Ronin won't kill him. Uh, unless John also has a neural EMP. Then if he advances the Ronin more, he'll be able to kill with two bioethics on the table. Clone chip comes down, which is really important for Koma Inu protection. Yeah, instantly killing that Koma Inu before it deals damage. There's still that data sucker counter, so. Some Quite small nice. small good news here. I mean, R&D would have to be the logical choice, right? I mean, you can't really be afraid of whatever is on top, whatever that ice is. And if it's a shocker, so it can't be a snare. Yeah, but. Brian needs to draw enough cards not to just die on the corpse next turn. It's kind of the tricky part here. Like his turn might just need to be draw three more cards or he'll just lose. Doesn't he only have two clicks up? Uh, I didn't see what he... I guess he drew a card and then played Clone Chip. And now he runs R&D. Okay. Seems like he's kind of going all in here unless he has the third I've had worse in here, which is pretty likely. And there is a hive. So that'll buy John three turns or so of an unmolested RD, which is kind of all he needs right now. Not a bad deal for zero res. Unless Brian starts hitting archives. I mean, if you hit archives, get some data cycler counters, you can accelerate it a little bit. Which, But if you hit archives, then I think you need to start. But then he takes shock damage. Oh, this is true. All right. So if that's a Ronin, that's the end of the game. And it is. Shockingly, it is a Ronin. So John's stealing that game with, with the Ronin net damage, yeah. even though I feel like the, the last about 10 minutes or so of this game was pretty inevitable. Mm -hmm. At least he finished it out pretty fast. It's true. It's true. It wasn't an hour long game, luckily. But we do have the grand finals coming up from this regional, as well as two more regionals coming down the pipes. So. Uh, thank you very much, Timmy, for commenting with me on this one. Yeah, I had fun. Looking forward to these other games. Yeah, for sure. And check back soon. We'll have a lot more coverage coming up. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Little red button.